to another costume video. Uh, in this video, we are going to be talking about the costumes worn by Leandrin from season two of the Wheel of Time's TV show. And oh, I love Leandrin in the show. We have some really, really interesting conversations about her costumes, obviously, but also just about her, her story. When I say we, uh, as always, I mean, I am joined uh, in this video by Pez, who is the, the costume design expert uh, who very famously watched season one of the Wheel of Time uh, TV show without having read any of the books. And just based on her knowledge and her expertise in costume and costume design, she was able to predict things in the series, like from way to the end of the series. So she knows her stuff. I'm also joined by Brie, who is one half of the best-selling sci-fi fantasy romance author duo, uh, Kit Rosha. Their most recent uh, book, A Consort of Fire, which is super fun, uh, super, super adult <laughs> uh, uh, fantasy book, uh, is out. You should totally check it out. I highly recommend it. Uh, there is a part two that is coming soon that might have a character that might perhaps be named after someone that is me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm very excited about that because I really enjoyed uh, book one. I'm very much looking forward to book two and a certain, anyway, I, I, I just named after me, but I'm very excited about it. Anyway, uh, so like I said, in this video, we're going to be talking about Leandra and her costumes and her story in uh, season two. There are very heavy spoilers in this video. Spoilers, like if you have not, finish the series well okay if you've not gotten as far as the gathering storm don't watch this video it's like the spoilers are heavy i do not want to spoil things for you please okay please i i, I don't know that i can give a, a heavier spoiler warning i don't want to spoil you yeah okay <laughs> so with that out of the way don't don't watch this video if you haven't read as far as the gathering storm <laughs> but if you have let's let's get into it let's be nerdy with let's be nerdy fashion model today i didn't change you, you really are like, you're like cat walking crazy eyes, <laughs> like the most crazy eyes mm. but i am dressed up like a nice at eyes mm. so crazy eyes i mean it does kind of work actually oh the latest uh i hope you're all voting in the grinwell cup but oh my gosh not the latest whatever one had leandrin in it the show goggles i was i oh show goggles leandrin in the show She's so <laughs> interesting. She's so interesting in the show. I don't care about Leandra in the books at all. Like not even a little bit in the show. I'm just like, I want to know everything about your life. Please tell me. I will sit at your feet and let you tell me a story. <laughs> so, she might kick you if you sit at her feet, she though. She probably would. She probably would. I believe the phrase I'm supposed to use is step on me. I think that uh, is the correct phrase. Seems about right. <laughs> not, yeah, not so much. I will sit at your feet and let you tell me a story. <laughs> I'm once again going to take a cue from Bree's setup here that you have uh, perhaps a, 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 a direction that you would like us to go today. I said die. I said die. I said die. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, given the red that you are sporting, I think we perhaps could begin. I'm going to be honest. I was with... trying to go brown, but it just kept coming out kind of red. So I guess there's something, yeah. a <laughs> metaphor in there. There could be a metaphor in there. Yes. Just a little bit. <laughs> so apologize in advance, you guys. My face seems to be broken today. So we'll just make some funny faces. <laughs> Please know that I'm in character acting. As a wacky mm. eyes today. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Perhaps this particular. Oh wacky yeah, crazy today. eyes right now. I mm. wish I had those cheekbones. <laughs> that jawline. Oh, oh my gosh. Flawless. I. I mean, don't you just wish you were Kate Fleetwood I just mean, in general? <laughs> like who doesn't? Yeah. No, everybody should. So <laughs> th let's just move beyond the glory that is Kate Fleetwood into the costumes that we are supposed to be discussing. <laughs> So one of the things that I noticed first about Leandrin's costume this season mm -hmm. is that she's got these yellow touches. Yeah. The little yellow stripe at the sleeve cuff is the most apparent, but there's also just this hint of yellow. Yeah, right there mm -hmm. inside the, the neckline of this coat that she wears. And I thought it was such an interesting touch because... Leandrin is trying very hard throughout the course of this season to get Nynaeve on side with her plans yeah. and she's 
she's playing up her connection to the yellows, to the healers, Mm -hmm. to try to prey on Nynaeve. And here she is also wearing this touch of yellow in her costume at the same time. Yeah, I would also just counter, like not counter actually, because I fully agree with this. I think that there might even be a hint of that, like this might, I don't think she's entirely lying. Like, yeah, I think that she has been... yeah, I've built a whole backstory with Leandra just because, again, she's so interesting in the show. She's so interesting they in the show. They invited it. Yes, they totally have. Where she, like, probably when she was really young and, and her son was young, was like, I will, sure, I want, you to, I want him to live. I want him to live. Mm-hmm. And then he kept getting older and older. And so she's been, like, Ishmael didn't break his promise. He kept him alive, but he's old and sick but he's not dying. And so she's probably been cozying up to the yellows for a while trying to figure out how to, to fix the situation. That's the backstory. I've I mean, in my head she clearly her. is cozying up to them to steal their meds. So yes, she, exactly. She That's what I mean. she, yeah. And of course she's got the uh, authoritative queer suspenders and the, the typical but what I'm calling the Black Aja bodice, but I don't know if that's the name for this I'm garment. I'm wearing <laughs> one today, just to, just to show off. Nice. Yes, you are. Yes. Yeah, it's it's like an underbust corset cincher thing that they have going on here. And it it's really interesting to me how it adds kind of that suspender element that Leandrin was missing just a little mm-hmm. bit last season. Um, she was more just the waist cincher last season, from right. what I recall. It also makes her look a little bit more like Moraine. Yes. So in addition to adding the touch of yellow, she's also kind of ingratiating herself with Nynaeve, or trying to. Mm-hmm. But, uh, well... Yeah. Maybe a different tack would have worked better with yeah. Nynaeve. But I think it's interesting to say it is working with others that she's targeting outside of Nynaeve, mm. which is the other Aes Sedai, which yes. is who we're seeing her interact with in this scene. Yeah. I, I There's something really interesting happening with like the like the shoulder here. Like, is this yeah. going over the... I'm going to go for... it. Like, it does look like it's... Mm-hmm. Like, how do you put this garment on? <laughs> like that's... Very carefully and with the help of a dresser. Yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, that's the, the honest answer. Yeah. Um, my guess is actually that it's probably a, a woolen blend there for the top. That's mm-hmm. what I would normally use, kind of like a suiting. And my guess is it's actually a tab. So it kind of associates like the epaulettes that we see in military uniforms. Right, okay, military yeah, 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 yeah. They also are used, like, they're, they're not just a decorative element. They also hold in place things like sashes. Mm. And so I think it might be kind of holding the the suspender element of this corset piece in place. But that's that's just a guess. I'm not the best at construction. Um, right. I have sewed myself into things on accident before, so... <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting, the idea that it's military, because I'm, I'm sure that like I'm, many people have discussed the ineffectual nature of the Greens in the books. Uh, like, yeah. it, they are not out battling, whereas the Reds are. The, like, mm-hmm. uh, however many people feel about the Reds, the Reds are actually the ones who are out in the world protecting the world from actual danger, whereas the Greens are, like, sitting at back at the tower talking about the potential that they have to protect the world from danger. That's the books. That's not the show. Right. But yeah, it's interesting to give like, yeah, this sort of military look to this. But I also was just noticing like that what I hadn't noticed that what I had noticed was just the accentuated shoulder is very reminiscent of Moraine to me. That's like a Moraine. Yeah, for sure. And the other thing that I think that's interesting is they're using, I think it's called shot silk. I don't, this here? Don't yell at me in the comments if I'm wrong, but the, <laughs> yeah, the sleeves, um, it's, it's silk where when you weave a fabric, there's two directions. There's the warp and the weft. Mm-hmm. And with silk, you can, I mean, not just silk, but we see it a lot in silk because it's shiny. Mm-hmm. You dye them different colors and it'll look one color in one direction or one oh. light and the other color in the other direction. And it looks to me like it's red and black. Yeah, I was. Oh, I was going to say blue, but yeah, you're right. Red and black was probably correct. 
Oh, that's it's definitely yeah. picking up some green, but that's a scene that has a lot of green in it. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, I I like the touches of um, other colors that might possibly mm-hmm. hint at motives. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And then, of course, we've got the detail here in her under. What do you call it? You keep, you said under bust, and that was much better than the under boob. Under boob was I was going to say yes. <laughs> under boob works. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's just interesting patterning in there. All the leather work is just yeah, exquisite. Yeah, the, the leather work they've done it's, for this show is amazing. It's so good. Yeah. So pretty. Yes, the outfit is so pretty. Yes, you are talking about the outfit. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the actress is also lovely. <laughs> I am. I am. Oh, Let's, okay. Can you see what's going on with that necklace? I'm curious. I haven't looked really closely at it. Is it just a red? It looks like it's just a red stone that matches the... Um, yeah, I wonder if it's red goldstone, like red or know. orange goldstone. I don't know what goldstone is, but it, maybe it looks what, to me like it matches it what's sparkly, going on with the ring. Um, the ring, yeah, is very... yeah. That's what and I, I thought the too. jewelry with her was an interesting touch this season as well. We didn't see her in much jewelry other than her her ring, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in the first season, I think she, she had an ear that cuff, black earring at one point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, she did have an ear cuff. I have a head yeah. cannon. There's more jewelry this season. I have a. Well, it's what's your? Head? I have a new head cannon. Zoom head back head? in on that. I think because one thing we know is that when they threw the when Stepan threw the ring back into the gold thing the jewel was gone i wonder if they mm-hmm. get to like some people like save the oh, the color right. stones from people who they've lost yeah. that oh, could i could see that i could totally a red see sister that. Yeah. that died or something i'm just gonna mm-hmm. go with my head cannon until someone tells me otherwise i like that legit. head cannon that's a good head because she was legit upset even about karenic yeah like yeah yeah so I just I have a lot of screenshots of Leandra because again <laughs> she's incredible. And I think you might yeah, I think you're right about the red and black. Yeah. It like, just, look at that. That looks striped almost. Her costume looks very different in dark scenes. Mm-hmm. And that's very cleverly done in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, we got another the boot shot. Really interesting. The boots. Yeah. Look at these boots. That's quite the heel for combat. That is some wicked, is, wicked glory right there. Yes. And, and look I how did... the leather to ma- work here matches the corset. Mm-hmm. Yep. It does. It's, it's lovely. Yeah, I had not very noticed that. Vibe. It is fully Wicked Witch vibes, yes. Oh, oh, she's fabulous. Yeah, glow up. I don't even know. The, the Leandrin, Leandrin in the books is so interchangeable with every other one of the I'm spoilers because I mean it's revealed in this season or but you know spoilers black asia she's like completely interchangeable with all the other black asia in the books and yet in the show oh she's like fabulous shining light oh my god yeah and the use of the different textures and textiles also makes her look more interesting in scenes mm-hmm. like this where we don't have the greatest lighting right so yeah Obviously, her her skin being in such contrast to the color she's wearing, that really makes her face pop, which is always mm-hmm. a concern in costume design. But look how her sleeves take on this slight gleam, but also fade into the shadows, whereas yeah. the jacket piece over the top completely absorbs the light. It's it's wonderful. She's the only person not in white in this scene. Like Even the patients are draped in white. And look at the similarities here between Leandrin and Nynaeve. They've both got the wide belt on. Mm-hmm. They're both holding themselves much more reserved than even these apprentices that are working in the Houses of Healing. It's, yeah. th- they're very similar, and I think they're trying to give you the impression through the, the costume choices and the aesthetics, this is what Nynaeve could become yeah. if she made different choices. Yes. Very much so. I, I also like I the color choices just in the background, the scenes, like the yellow flowers versus the red yeah. um, potion in the front. Yeah. Like yeah. The yellow mm-hmm. of the candles and the greenery and stuff. And that, mm-hmm. yeah. Red means dead. Yeah. Yeah. There's the ear cuff again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not, not as much jewelry, I think. You're right. And look, gold wrapping in the braid. Oh, yep. Oh, I didn't even notice that, but yeah. 
it might even be her own hair or meant to give the appearance of I I am really bad at hair. It does, I have does some. look that's not look really like it. hair. It's the text yeah, um, the texture doesn't yeah. look hair. It, uh. it kind of does actually to me. It looks like it's um I mean, I I cannot imagine why you would want to spend that much time twisting hair like that mm. because but it is uh, my head canon i go though she doesn't have a warder but see because my head canon for like alana is that her and her warders do it every morning <laughs> but, I love it. but i guess with leandrin it's just with the power she just in the morning the just real walks. reason everyone <laughs> yeah. in the books wants galad for their warder so he can do their hair and makeup exactly exactly <laughs> Because you know he's good at his own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, here it looks. Yeah, the, the you're not seeing. Yeah, the gold it looks like there are um, so, yeah. gold bands. You go back. To yeah, here. Yeah. No, up there too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks These like ones it's here. hair. I was, I was, that's hair, but there's gold bands. Yeah, My I guess was thinking there was gold from a woven different, in here. Like wig piece, and so yeah. It, yeah. it looked funny in that one bit of lighting. Yeah. My and look guess at how the similarities wig- between her braids and the shape. Yeah. Of Nynaeve's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's definitely mirroring so Nynaeve's good. hairstyle. I was just about to say, I would guess just the only person in the show who's not wearing a wig is Nynaeve. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Zoe's the only one who's, this is just her hair. I mean, obviously she has extensions, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think that she's the only one who, when she goes home, this is still what her hair looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whereas the rest of them are in wigs. All right. Same out. Oh, yeah. Here you can see. Yeah, it yeah, it's through. like a two-piece that folds back and fastens. Oh, I'm so glad I take so many random screenshots. I don't even notice things until I see it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> there was this scene that I was wrong about, but sort of right. <laughs> sort of right. I just love that, you know, everybody when they're up to no good wears black. Like, Oh, yes. Thanks for the clear <laughs> color coding there. So. This is one of the Have ones I watched. Was, the Korean- right, I was so sure this was not her taking the girls anywhere. 1000% yeah. sure. I, yeah. I, the reason I thought it was was because of that look. Do I have a, did I get a picture of the actual look? <laughs> this look, which is just like, oh, I still, the reason I think I'm sort of right is the reason I, I thought this look was her like annoyed at specifically Elaine. I was like, I can imagine her being really annoyed with Elaine in this <laughs> <That's> moment. <fair. laughs> yes. <laughs> but I think, like, obviously, this is her going to see her son. And mm-hmm. about this whole plan, she needed Nynaeve to be following her. And I think she was like, I still think that this is her exasperated. Like, is she here? Oh, I need her following oh, me, do but I don't want her that did? close. Yes, because she needed Nynaeve to know that path. She needed Nynaeve to know the tunnel underneath there. That's like, even when like in whatever episode it is where Nynaeve follows her out that tunnel, I think that's episode four. Like she... I think she had to have Nynaeve know where that tunnel was in order to be able to capture them. Like that was, it was a whole intricate plan. I, I, that's my, I'm definitely not on board with that. I like the head cannon, but it's not working for me emotionally. Uh, I, I okay, do not think it, Leander it, thought Nynaeve was going to pop up there and, and see her weak spot. I do yeah, not think I, she I, would there's reveal a, it there's a hole to Nynaeve. I, yeah, I oh. think was- I think if Leandrin was planning for Nynaeve to follow her, it would have been with an ambush set up before they reached her son at this mm. point in time rather than doing it later because she, she she's hiding up. her son from everybody. She fucked up emotionally well, I, when she when yeah. she called off on Nynaeve. I I feel like she that was not a planned thing for Nynaeve to see. See that's that. this is where this is where again like everybody's head cannon on this is different. I agree that I think she fucked up in that moment, but I think she planned to have that moment so that she could, like, the whole purpose was to get close with Nynaeve. So I think there was a plan, and then when it happened, this is my, again, my headcanon, there was a plan, and then when it happened, it was too real for her and too vulnerable for her. And so that, she did fuck up, but she didn't think she was going to fuck up. It's an interesting headcanon. Until it happened. I definitely, yeah. my headcanon is that that, that, that bitch is not letting anyone near her weak spots, not even for <laughs> manipulation. Uh-uh. No hmm. way is she showing her belly to Nynaeve. All right. All right. That's that's because my like, personal read on Leandra. It's your she personal head is not yeah. uh, let's share. I mean, she <laughs> she used it afterwards, but like I felt like mm. the the shock and the rage was, you know, real. And I, I just I just yeah. think no. But you know, right. I mean, I think that you drew some interesting lines and like maybe that was a long-term plan. 
Yeah, that's that. That's how I read it. Like that's how I don't know if I. That's how I read it in the moment. But that's how I've read it. Yeah. I, I don't know when that came. Honestly, you know, you watch the show so many times, and eventually your brain just figures out. You think you've always <laughs> thought something, and maybe you did it. I don't know. <laughs> that's the other the interesting thing. thing about this costume. Um, specifically, is do you mm. see the black work embroidery on yep. it? Yep, I was going to ask about that, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not sure what it's exactly signifying. I, I mm. believe it might be just random flowers or something, although I yeah. don't think, quote-unquote, random flowers are a thing that the costume department is doing. No. I think it's something very <laughs> yeah. specific. I just can't mm. tell what. But I thought that was interesting because there are other characters that we see who have a similar style or pattern of embroidery in either very dark blue mm. or black in yeah. this season where it is a tell for which side they're mm -hmm. on. Right. Uh, but here she is with her. Oh, and look <sighs> how dark the, the jewel in her ring mm -hmm. looks right now. Yep. And just her, that's like, I mean, is she wearing black? She, that's a black cloak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If that's the robe. Yeah. That's yep. the robe. Yeah. I'm guessing this belt must be some sort of terabone. Thing. Like I hadn't seen this particular style on her before. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I don't do we have a better picture of it at all? It's hard to see. No. I don't think we do. No. Because she, like, I it's, it's not we'll framed. I suspect we'll see her yeah. in something similar, though, when we see her again. I, I, like, I think I've said this to you, Brie. I'm not sure. But I think they're setting these two up to be, like, long-term antagonists, like a whole... I hope so. Professor X Magneto thing. Because I, when I was reading uh, The Dragon Reborn, Nynaeve slaps uh, Leandrin in the face in the book. And so, yeah, like, and not, actually, she punches her and knocks her on her rump, I believe, is the phrasing in the book. <laughs> but, like, she's the character that Nynaeve punches. And then later on in the book, uh, in The Dragon Reborn, Nynaeve punches somebody that Egwene had locked in Teleron Riyadh. And I think it's a Miko. She punches her. And the combination of uh, what Egwene did with locking her in Teleron Riyadh and Nynaeve's punch, which causes her to release Saigar, basically, she's still somebody with a punch. Yeah. I think it would be super interesting if she stilled Leandrin that way instead of like just random black Aja because then that she's stilling somebody who was trying to be her mentor. She's stilling somebody who kind of gets off on stilling people and it's somebody that we like. Wait, I, has I, Leandrin stilled anybody? Oh, well, Deadpool. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. She, she does. It's a definitely, yeah, I mean, she, she does get off on severing people men, Stilling, men. Yes. i think we need to be men to yeah though. exactly leandra does not feel yes. that way about yeah. women at all no no right exactly but like she also i think she distances herself from what she's doing to men because they're men they're so foreign like in her mind they're not her whereas and that's why i think it would be very interesting to have her go through it having probably done that to several men like, I doubt that that man in episode one of season one is the only man oh, no. she's ever seen. No, I'm pretty sure that... Yeah. Well, and I, I really appreciate them adding the antagonistic relationship between Leandrin and Nynaeve, not just because it gives us more character development for mm. Leandrin, but when I was reading the books, Moggy kind of comes out of nowhere. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, she there's does. No, yeah. There's no emotional connection between... Nynaeve and Mogedian to give us the stakes that we need, right, for a really satisfying antagonistic relationship. Mm. We get them eventually, but it takes time to build them, whereas we already have that relationship here with Leandrin. Yeah. I, 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 again, obviously not in the show, but I do think it's going to go from Leandrin to Mogedian. Like, I yeah, think that's yeah, what's yeah. going to happen. Here Here's my controversial sort of, but, opinion. Less yeah. stilling women more killing women. Oh, yes. I don't want yes. everybody to but get depowered. I would just like Nynaeve to shake a bitch or something. I just, there's something yes, about yeah. it that like... But I don't want to kill Leandra. I mean, I don't kill her. her. I want her in the show. But, but there's something that like, and we all know this because we've discussed the long-term pattern mm. in the series. There is something yes. about how the series just keeps stripping the power away from women. Yep. Making them live with it enslaving them yeah you know, demoralizing them yeah. humiliating them i was really happy thing. at the end of season two that Egwene just did a thing instead of leaving someone collared you know <laughs> i was like, oh really yeah absolutely yeah, i okay. agree 
Absolutely. I was not unhappy with it. I missed the scene with her and Nynaeve and Egwene. Just, I, yeah, I, I know. I have, I have thoughts on this. I, I just. I, I didn't. She, it I was, was okay yeah, with her. Yeah. I get what other people said. It's okay to need help, but it's also okay to regain <laughs> your own bodily autonomy and just smush the person who took it away from you. Yeah. So. it was, For me, it wasn't so much that the, the needing help thing, although I do get that. I get that was. I missed the interaction just because I think that was a good moment for their friendship and their relationship. And it was obviously a great naive moment. Like that's just, you know, I love, I miss great naive moments. Not, I didn't miss it in the show. It's just. I understand missing the moment between them. But I also like the killing Rena in that moment. Like what for me was, again, this is one of those things I'm waiting on because Rena wasn't a threat to her at that moment. So it wasn't a, that was revenge. It wasn't uh, the self defense. So uh, no. I'm that hoping that the show absolutely. <laughs> oh, you think like she was not a threat? Like she was. You think that like, we were just gonna let Rena down and she was never? I'm sorry. What? There's a point at which you've done so much violence that your continued existence is inherently a threat. Mm. That's my argument. I have no problem. Also, I don't. I, I'm fine with not a little bit of violence. I'm an angry person. I, Oh yeah. I just, I guess I just, I think that killing somebody in self-defense is one thing. Obviously killing anybody is going to give you any trauma, but I think that I hope that the show doesn't just have it be like, yes, she killed her. And now she's fine well, with the fact that she took a life that wasn't a threat to I her. I mean, if we're going to have that that the happens. Emmons Field people yeah. start processing all the deaths they caused, those boys are in big I trouble. <laughs> I mean, they were in the books they, that they actually dealt with it a lot. Like that was but they only really dealt with it with the men. The uh, trauma only Rand really did. Karen and Matt were just kind of out yeah. there, like sporadically leaving carnage behind them. And sometimes they thought yeah, about Matt it, but did, usually not. <laughs> Matt didn't Mostly think Karen about it ever. About how things smelled. Yeah, I was gonna say Matt never really thought about it. Perrin did, but then like Fayo was like, "Don't," and then he didn't. So yeah, that was there's a lot how that out. worked there. But that was yeah. a big side tangent. So just. Yes, it was. Because I'm advocating (laughs) murder of women again. You know me. (laughs) Yes. So look how dark her costume looks Mm -hmm. in this scene. Look how dark everybody's costume looks in this scene. Yes. With one, well, two exceptions. Yes, yes, exactly. I I think that that mm -hmm. light blue versus that dark blue are so on purpose. Yes, I oh, would they are. concur. Yes, I would concur. We can, with we that. can circle back around to One, our other babies. One yes. thousand percent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the other thing that's hard to tell with Leandrin's costume from this season, her costume is still asymmetrical. It doesn't show up as much in the close-ups of her face. We see more of the symmetry in the silhouette. Okay. But the skirt piece is still like pretty sharply angled. I think you're right. Yeah. She to betrays them. I I think there's a good wide shot of her. Yeah, there's one. You can see it right there. When she's coming out with the horses, I think that's like the best shot. Mm. If you have that, I'm sure I do. Oh, here's yeah. You know, sequential. I forgot she dumped Nadine's ring too. Yeah, see how the shorter part of the skirt. It it doesn't show up super great in this photo. I'm sorry, but see Mm -hmm. how the shorter part of the skirt is asymmetrical. Yeah, the longer one isn't. Um, but the, yeah, there's something, it's sort of like a, I don't know what to call it, like an apron in the front. Oh. Yeah. It's yeah, like a long cool. jacket that, um, is cut at an angle. Yeah. Proud mama here. <laughs> her. Oh, I love her. Just doing hmm. evil plots. Such evil stage mom vibes. <laughs> yes. Very much. Yes. Okay. So yeah, there's like a jacket or something mm-hmm. that you can sort of yeah, see it's, here. Yeah. It's the wool piece that has the, the shoulder tabs to it. Mm-hmm. It's got like a skirt that's asymmetrical. Like I'm just perplexed. Like, cause the, yeah, this, the leather thing is going over, but then it goes under uh, it, this outfit. Mm-hmm. Yes. You need a dresser. I would not be able to put this outfit on. <laughs> would you so think I would just, you know, that in, in the red you, Aja. You put on the, the, jacket thing then you put on your leather thing then you fold your little things up yeah yes it it's more simple than it appears but yes you they're all absolutely well yes okay the the red aja has to have like a button doing and undoing weave because they don't have waters yeah exactly (laughs) for all of robert jordan's many many buttons and then she comes 
out the way darkness. she comes out of the darkness in this scene just yes. cheekbones bones first yes <laughs> yeah. exactly Fabulous. it's just oh it is fantastic like it's just her her head is just floating uh-huh <laughs> in darkness which so is fitting yes very <laughs> very appropriate yeah leandrin's looking at elaine Leandrin like i'm gonna have to buy so much alibi asparagus god damn it yeah, I'll buy the <laughs> That's why I thought that look when she was walking was her frustration with Elaine. With her just being like, oh, the daughter heir? I but mean, like, you got on, the right seriously? expression, just the wrong moment, because it's basically what she Yes. Does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> so. Alibi asparagus. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh. We need a Wheel of Time show cookbook with blanched alibi asparagus. And so I've seen some people speculating that when when she's here in the ways that she's wearing a ring with a black stone, I'm not sure if she no, is or not. that looks red to me. It absolutely looks black. No, it looks red Ooh. to me if you zoom but in. But <laughs> we've seen the red stone look black in yes. other lighting. I was just going to say that. Yeah, like this looks red to yeah. me, but it, they have done, and I mean, I don't know if they've done it intentionally. I would assume it's intentional moments oh, yeah. where like she's clenching her fist and the ring, the lighting yeah. makes it look black and stuff like that a lot with her. So yeah, I, I think it's absolutely intentional. We've seen that with actually several of the Aja's rings. I do think they have a ring that absolutely has a black stone in it. We saw it during the, the shadowy council of shadow, shadow people. Um, <laughs> yes. Scene, but yes. I'm not convinced it's black in this scene. No, I think this is a red ring. I think it would be very weird. Like there would be just the, I don't think it would be very stupid as a black Aja to like, just have a black ring. Like, yeah. Anybody could find that. It's just not, that would be dumb. And she's not dumb. Like, yeah, here it looks black. Yeah. It, it, it definitely depends on the lighting conditions, but yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just not convinced because she's still wearing aspects of the red costume mm -hmm. as well. Like she's not just going full see a losers i'm black aja yeah no. she has yeah. not been exposed in the in the show yet no she like she's been exposed right. to to rima but rima is not like nobody knows so she could go back as far right. as the show canon is concerned right because so. she thinks the girls are permanently taken care of exactly and she does actually she goes back and is like yeah hanging oh, so out you with can them. see the red um yeah. asymmetrical line of the tunic here you know what she's bit. she's not yeah. got the other skirt she's just switched to pants so it was the no, tunic she's, she's got the pants. pants yeah 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 she, you right, can I see that in the, the diagonal the, but um yeah i knew she was in pants there but i wasn't sure mm, if it was like yeah. a split skirt before yeah, she was in a skirt, I think, during the Tarvalon scenes. But, mm -hmm. I mean, switching to pants makes sense when you're wrestling three unconscious people through the ways plus horses. Yes. I would not want to wear skirts in the ways. I just feel like there'd be creepy crawlies and you, you want to be... You brought this up last I'm season, sure I think, like leggings. Leandra. Yeah, I feel like they... Officially not yeah. a horse girl. She took horses in the ways. Yes. Yeah. She's like, bitch, Exactly, that's care. true. Yeah. This is actually a different tunic as well. Um mm -hmm. It's got the, oh, the yeah. broad cuffs with kind of it looks like a leather kind of trim on them almost, mm -hmm. and I can't I can't quite tell from this picture, but although the belt is still wide, I'm not convinced it's the same. It, it may not be the it suspenders was. one because it's, it's got a I, different yeah. pattern. I can almost I, so. it looks like yeah, and then of course the black yeah you can see very clearly the different pattern yeah different belt very yeah. very different belt very different belt yeah. It, the cloak looks navy to me, but this looks black. Yeah. So it, it may well be navy, um, but there are also a lot of blacks that appear dark blue on camera just because of how black dye works. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So the clasp of the neck, yeah. They're balancing in that scene for the greenery of the jungle and the blues and oranges mm -hmm. of the Shan Chan, which also messes with things. Yes, yes. It's black enough. Yeah, and the, black the, enough. the black around the neck, like this definitely thing, this whatever this it's thing black. is, yeah. that is black. Yeah. That's what makes me think it's black in person. Right, okay. I don't know, it still looks really blue to me in, like, in all the shots, but... It, it does look really blue, but then it looks mm. black in other spots. Like, yeah. black is a challenging color. I imagine, yeah. <laughs> I just like this shot of her. <laughs> just, <laughs> just... She's like, I made... I may have brought them to you, but also fuck you. 
Exactly. See, here's the only scene exactly. in like all of season two that I missed. And I mean, I'm not super mad about it either. I'm not going to be like complaining about the show. But when she mm. when she like zapped 90s ropes, I was like, here we go. One of my favorite book scenes. Yes. And then Nynaeve like yeah. learning their weaves and turning them immediately against her is definitely one of my favorite Nynaeve moments. But she's on a journey this season and it did not fit with her journey. So I don't I'm not arguing with them. Yeah, no. Yeah, like that. If I that's had actually thought like, about when it. I, I would have known. I, yeah, I I suspect. So we've seen her do something similar in this season. Not not this moment, obviously from the books, but she learned um, what Leandrin oh, was yeah, doing she in did that it. fight that they had in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So I think what we're gonna see is she will have learned the weaves during this fight, and we'll see her use them later. Yeah, it's well, it's very possible, and that like that's what I was trying to say when I like I miss the scene with Egwene and ninety. I miss it, and yet I don't yeah. because I figured the show, like she has to have a growth arc, and and she was so big in in season one, so you have yeah. to bring her down in order for her to get up, for it to make sense. Otherwise, she's just gonna be big all the time. Like, yeah, yeah and it's gonna be like that with all of the the main characters i think and so it's gonna be something we're all gonna have moments where we're like wait this should happen here and it doesn't and it doesn't yeah because it can't in in the show because the show actually has um a predetermined structure yes because you know they, like they know where it's going <laughs> yes uh and then they her casually i'm casually leaning i'm not ca- i have just yeah. I, I'm not it's just huge. returned it's from betraying you. How do you do, yes. fellow Aes Sedai? It's the clothes that she wore. Exactly. That's exactly the vibe. <laughs> How do you do, fellow Aes Sedai? Look, I have asparagus. <laughs> it's mm. just Kate Fleetwood pretending she can't act. It's so good. Oh, uh, the, the layers of that scene are incredible. Yes. You know what it's like? It's like you um, watch the scene and you, I was just like, don't make any facial expressions. Don't make any facial expressions. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Does Varen know? Yes. Do they know each about so each other? Funny. What is happening yeah. right now? Yeah. You know what this reminds like the layers of acting going on here? Reminds me of okay, if you listen to the audiobooks, uh the uh Michael Kramer and Kate Redding made up an accent for the Sean Chan. Like they didn't know that Robert Jordan had said the Sean Chan would be Texan. So they were just like, I don't know, slurred, I guess. So they just made up an accent, which is great. It's fine. And I, I think it's fantastic. But then, uh, obviously, they knew what the Ileaner accent was because that was pretty, like, coded into the text of the, the book. And then there's this one scene where Egyanin, who is a Shan Chan, is mocking uh, Bail Doman. And so she's imitating his speech. And so <laughs> they imitate an Ileaner through the made-up accent for the Shan Chan. And it is so good. Like, it, I remember the first time I heard it. I just had to pause and rewind and pause. Like, that is fucking brilliant, what you've just done here. You're, like, making, doing one made-up accent through another made-up accent. That's what I'm seeing here. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. I am an amazing actress pretending that I can't act. Ah, yes, I am just from the region of the asparagus. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're both wearing those those uh, plastic eyeglasses you could get as a kid with the yeah. fake mustache and the googly eyes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. Okay, the spoiler level I now know for this scene. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> <What's the video? sighs> yes, the spoiler level is yes. Yes, <laughs> the spoiler level is beware. Do not watch if you have not finished the book. What is going on with her sleeve? I remember this. I remember um, this I one watching. Like- it's like a half cloak. Something. She's got like a half yeah, cloak going on. Yeah, that's here. right. She's got like a, a cloak thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it was really interesting too, like the going back to the discussion about is the ring black, is the ring red, is it whatever. Mm-hmm. She's wearing the costume that she wore to take the girls and drop them off yeah. when she comes back. So she's absolutely dressed as herself yes. as a member of the Red Aja when she drops them off. So Mm-hmm. I think it's reasonable to assume that if the ring is black in those scenes, we're meant to believe that there's a weave that exposes the true color of the stone yeah. at certain points in time. But that's still an awfully big risk to take, although I guess you're probably not going to encounter many other people in the ways. I, I still think it would be very, like, I, maybe this is just me, 
But if I took off one I ring, and I know I would forget to like, oh, I, oh, whoops, I forgot to take off my ha, 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 I'm evil ring while talking with the people who don't know I'm evil. Like that would be, I, yeah, no, you don't switch out your jewelry for, for that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is a, definitely a very, very asymmetrical, weird half cloak situation she's got going. Yeah, and they're using the asymmetry in an interesting way this season. A lot of characters have seen more balance restored to them. Mm -hmm. And so those characters have started to regain some of the symmetry that was missing in season one. But for others, the asymmetry has actually gotten worse or grows worse through their own actions. Yeah, see, it totally looks red. Like, it looks like a dark brown, but that's just red yeah, to me. Yeah, it like, looks like really... red in dark lighting with firelight. Exactly. That's exactly what it looks like. They don't yeah, have like so, okay, so she switched out her cloak. They have stones, and like there is like a sort mm -hmm. of when you're talking about realistic looking stones, like there's a limit to what the yeah you're not you're not getting the exactly. jewel tone reds out of that. Oh, the scene! Oh my god, the scene was so good. <laughs> it's two oh powerhouse god. actresses together, <laughs> like oh. and one man pretending to be dead, <laughs> <laughs> pretending to be dead. Yes. Honestly, <laughs> pretending to be dead is so hard. Like, props to this guy. <laughs> yes. He's not dead yet. He's almost dead. So, he's mostly dead. <laughs> so, I personally, like, this is one of my favorite scenes. I would have written the whole season around it. How do I get these two se two actresses together? I have to write a scene where they're together. Like, we have to, <laughs> we have to do it. We have to do it. Oh, and see, this is the same black cloak yeah, she was wearing before. And it looks how black it now. Looks completely black. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, Lighting is hard. I think it'll be interesting in season just three if she just gets yourself. like um snapped up by Moggy. Because I think that they could do a really interesting thing here mm. where they really just grind in how these all the dark friends are basically just cat toys now. Getting batted around from yes. person to person. Yes. Yep. I yeah. think that yeah, I think that's gonna happen. I fully think that's gonna happen. I just oh well, and they've set up such wonderful motivation for Leandrin to want to serve a different Yes. Yeah. Because like, she sure as hell doesn't want anything to do with this one anymore. No. Like, and if she, like, had her son, like, living well past probably his natural life in a horrible state, and then this one slowly killed her son in front of her. So Right. And Moggy offers something new. Moggy offers yep. revenge. And what did Leandrin say? Find something new to live for. Exactly. Exactly. I totally think that's going to happen. Uh, the, all the discussions about like, why be a dark friend? It's true, except when you start to think about none of them thought that it was going to be the apocalypse. They all just were like, yes. Right. Like, um, I'm going to join the evil Homeworlds Association. Oh, I'm Rick the King. Exactly. And it probably worked fine as long as it was at the apocalypse. Yeah, he's that same she's outfit. She's wearing the same outfit again here next to yeah. Swan. So it's obviously not giving off enough dark friend vibes, vibes to people exactly. who aren't us. Yeah. Well, they know yeah. <laughs> that black cloaks are just cool. I mean, yes. they're not discriminating against goth girls. No, <laughs> absolutely not. And again, yeah, in this light, it looks blue again. So yeah, yeah lighting is just again. a. Yeah. 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 Lighting is so hard. And and usually, like, when I would buy fabric, I went to this giant warehouse. It's, it's a little different for people with an actual budget. Um, <laughs> but when I would buy sh uh, fabric for productions, I was usually in a giant warehouse or a teeny little shop where it either had giant fluorescent lighting, like, 50 feet up or mm. no lighting at all <laughs> oh, or whatever. That's helpful. So, it gets really hard because you usually take it back to a studio and you're putting it in the studio lighting and then you get it outside and it's like, well, but. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Again, with the, this, this is the mm. weird, I, this cloak looks so uncomfortable to me. The only thing I can. I don't know. I, I kind of love it. It's so dramatic. <laughs> it looks, am, it looks amazing, yeah. but it feels like it would just be slipping off all the time. <laughs> it's very carefully structured and attached yes. in ways that don't show. I'm sure it is. But it, it looks, also forces her to hold herself straight like yes, that, right? Yes, mm -hmm. very much so. I was going to comment, like, look at her posture here. Sometimes we use costumes to change actors' posture on purpose. Uh, like, we'll we'll construct something where, I mean, you never want to put an actor in discomfort, right? Mm -hmm, and of course. Ignore all the videos that you've ever heard of people complaining about their corsets, because that's... <laughs> that's a dissertation unto itself, but mm -hmm. uh, we, we sometimes will do things like construct it so that they have to stand up a little straighter than might be their natural resting posture. I've seen posture, a couple yeah. of these actors talk about that. 
I've heard many actors talk about like the minute they put the costume on and it feels like putting on the role. So I would yeah. imagine that part of that is in the design of the costume. It, one of the reasons I became a costume designer in the first place was um, the Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. the the movies that Peter Jackson and crew did. Um, yeah. There was all these documentary features and I had lots of time on my hands and mm -hmm. they had an interview with the actor who plays Theoden. I think it is. He was talking about how the props and costume department put gold work all over the entirety of the inside of his armor. So when oh, he's getting no. dressed in the armor of the king, no one can see it but him. It's never shot. Mm -hmm. But there's all this work inside the costume to help him be the king. Wow. And it's so much... I love doing stuff like that. So, like, mm -hmm. when I was more actively involved in costume design and production. We would have talks with the actors, like, you know, are you trying to stand up straighter? Do you have motion that you have to mm. go through? Stuff like that. We, you, It's a conversation with the actor to help them create the character and get in character when they get dressed. Oh, that's so cool. These cuffs Those are Those cuffs so cool. are amazing. So it's, it's like a bell cuff, but yeah. with all this military trim in leather, and yet it's so stiff, it doesn't fall. Oh, I mm. love it. it's so fascinating. This is such a yeah. melodramatic outfit. I just... Oh, so It really is, it. yes. I have a whole, like, again, backstory. It's like she walks in and she's, like, staring at Moraine's picture and thinking... Sorry, I'm having a brain freeze at this moment because I'm realizing I have to change my backstory. The show oh. canon has changed my backstory. Because I had this whole thing where... Uh, Moraine had to break up with her because of like the mission that landed in her lap with Swan uh, and then her and Swan uh, developed a relationship because they were working together. But no, they had a relationship before. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I ha Ooh, that's fun. I have to make a but new backstory. they're so much older. <laughs> they're so much older in the yeah, show but, that there's plenty of backstory yeah. time. Why there is, is my oh, head coming I, oh, This off. is so fun. <laughs> Oh no, I can't see your head, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, just, I was just gently posing. Um, very normal. Yourself. Did, did you accidentally marry a king named Henry? In, in <laughs> I, I am smarter England. than that. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. I get to uh, construct a whole new head cannon. Okay, so that's fun. Ah! Okay, and then I guess I have some Instagram and shots. Oh, oh my god. Just. Yeah. Just and look, the cuffs are even asymmetrical. Oh, yeah. So on mm. one side she has the the cloak drape, yes. and on the other side she's got the weird. Oh, this is fascinating. And those are jawed purses. Go back a little. Yes, bit I was too. about to ask. Like, like, it, it it's like it military on the left and like flouncy gown stuff on the right, like this leather and the cuff yeah. and everything and how structured it is. And then like yeah. the right's all this like flowing, flowy stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of single shoulder capes in certain eras of military. Oh, like, right. I don't specialize in military, so no, I, I, I don't can visualize any, like, exactly what you're thinking about too. The the lines on this costume oh. are just fascinating. Yeah, those are totally jodhpurs with like a stripe on them. Okay, which also adds to the formal wear aspect mm. of it, right? Because if you've ever seen anybody in a tuxedo, a lot of tuxedos have the, the mm -hmm. little stripe down the outer seam of yeah. the leg. Yeah. So yes. this is a very Art Nouveau yes. design, like okay. explicitly yeah. Art Nouveau, and that plays into my whole. <laughs> my whole thing that I've been obsessing over where like the Aes Sedai are kind of dressed like the, the mm. late 19 teens yes. the early 1930s. Yes. They've got that aesthetic going on. Now Art Nouveau is actually, uh, it's a, it's way more in the 19 teens than the twenties mm. because um, you see the shift from Art Nouveau to Art Deco when in the real world, when they opened King Tut's tomb, actually it's a thing. <laughs> okay. Fashion history is weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I, I, it's really interesting to me because we've basically got the eyes to die aesthetically trapped from World War One to mm. the start of World War Two. Like they don't know what's coming, but visually they're right. telegraphing it. To, you know, history. Yeah. Of design. Also, that's like and an interesting time period for us. That's just old enough to be outside the like lived yeah. experience of anyone who's old. Mm. But it's also a time, and at least yeah. in America, that's very much seen as like glamorous. Like glamour historical, yes, so they yeah. they seem old, but like 
fancy. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there you have it. Those are our thoughts on the costumes and just the general vibe and the character of uh, Leandrin in season two of the Wheel of Time TV show. I love Leandrin in the show. I said this in the video, but I just I cannot get over the how how interesting she is in the show because in the books I do not care. I like I just I don't like her. I have this general like despise even. like I, I despise Leandrin in the books, but I don't. I don't know, despise is actually a strong word because I don't care about her all that much. But in the show, she is so fast. Like, Kate Fleetwood doing amazing work. But the writing also, like, just the, the way they made her into a three-dimensional character that I I want to know everything about. And I've, like, built these backstories. Have you done that? Are you, like, building a, a, a backstory and a, your own headcanon for Leandrin and Leandrin and her history with Moraine because I totally have a headcanon about that. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like my content and you want to support me, I do have a Patreon that is also linked in the description below to my patrons. As always, I am so grateful for you and for your continued support. I could not do this without you. So thank you so, so much. And with that, I am going to end this here. So please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!